Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys, you guys know what that mean means. That means we have another tale coming from the Pissy Pied Piper, honey. Make sure y'all have y'all's teacups because this tea is crazy as hell. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and do an update on the whole Asriel Clary situation. Now, if you guys don't know, um, two days ago I posted on my Instagram page um, photos of Asriel and her family supposedly back together. They're having this reunion. Everybody's dressed like a damn Kardashian with the white t-shirt and the damn blue jeans. And they're all dancing off beat and trying to look like one big happy family. Well, you know me, honey. I see through the damn bullshit, okay? So what went down is that Asriel posted this. She says, let the healing process begin. Love y'all. Thank y'all. I even thank everyone who follows me because you all believed in me when I could not believe in myself. Hashtag moving on to better days. And then she goes on to say, P.S. Everyone will be posting their own favorite photos. So make sure you follow the family. Hashtag on the run with Azriel. Then everybody started posting pictures from the photo shoot and everything else. <laughs> These pictures look so fake and contrived. So anyways, I took to my Instagram page and I wrote, Hashtag Asriel Cleary and her family wore matching outfits and posed for pictures on her most recent post. Y'all can make all the excuses you want for her, but I've never seen a victim or their family members behave in this manner. Who schedules an entire photo shoot, does a bunch of silly poses, then demand then demands that all their followers start following their family members. Shouldn't all these so-called hurt people be quietly seeking family counseling and trying to rebuild the bond that our pissy allegedly stole from them over the past three years? I see through the BS. This was all a plot all along. This family is looking for fame and a reality TV show. I said what I said. So, of course, that caused a lot of debate. A lot of conversation. And I would say at least 95% of y'all saw where I was coming from. Then you had the other small percentage who accused me of victim shaming and, you know, all that mush mouth shit that they always come with when they have nothing else of substance to rebuttal anything that I'm saying. Now, like I've been telling you guys from Jump, both of these parents um, in this situation are full of crap. They literally handed their daughters off to R. Kelly on a silver platter. And now that the gravy train has ran dry, folks are trying to pitch reality TV shows. Folks are coming out with documentaries. And Asriel knows what she's doing. Her and her father have been linked up. Um, from what I'm hearing, she's been back home since as early as October. But she's never lost contact with her father. And that's what I've been telling you guys all along but nobody believed me and I was accused of victim shaming right so on top of her already being in contact with her father if you guys remember during that fight with um Jocelyn and she starts asking for her phone and somebody says your father has the phone it's under the sink call the police hey, somebody call the police or I'm turning off this live and I'm calling it my damn self call the police your phone Shit is back. under the sink your father said so what I'm hearing is that the father was possibly there as well. So it's a lot of shady shit in the mix. But now what's going on is that today I was sent the trailer for the documentary that I told you guys about the other day called Precedence. This is the documentary that started the fight between Azriel and Joycelyn that I spoke on, Okay. So like I said, the reason why they were fighting is because Azriel and Jocelyn and the rest Azriel and Joycelyn and the rest of the girls who are, you know, with R. Kelly, you know, girlfriends of his, you know, lovers, all that stuff, they were all coming together to put out a positive documentary to show the other side. Basically it was supposed to combat surviving R. Kelly one and two. But then what happened is that basically Azriel flipped the script on the girls and she decided to switch up. 
but not before she had already recorded her scenes. They already had the footage of her and her father. Remember, this is the same man who was throwing rocks at windows, claiming he hadn't seen or heard from his daughter in years. At this point, if you are our daughter, then come back outside or something, talk to us or whatever, let us know something. But mysteriously, he's in this documentary with her, and she's basically blasting her father for all the fuck shit that he's been doing. He was one of the most talented R&B singers in music, reigning with hit songs for over 25 years. But just as night comes with day, there was a dark side filled with rumors, speculations, and charges of sexual misconduct. For the first time, witness the only complete story of R. Kelly. Hear from the family members kept secret by his own family. He was a wise man, but a broken man. He didn't get the correct help that he needed in his life. As I start growing up and more th and becoming an adult, I realized my father had a secret. He had robbed R. Kelly himself. I've done things for everybody. I'm 31 in the game. Through the storm. Through the rain, through the sleep, through the tsunami of rumors and allegations and court cases. Okay, y'all y'all proof, y'all witness to that. The lead lawyer tasked with defending unfavorable odds. On a scale of one to ten, how hard is this case? It's a twelve. Prominent expert opinion from the tops of the psychiatric field. Honestly, I feel sad thinking about the case. I feel sad thinking about any young woman, lady who was a victim. I feel sad thinking about what R. Kelly could have gone through, potentially being sexually abused or abused as a child. I feel sad that hurt people hurt people. What if the trauma that he suffered when he was sexually abused as a child, what if that were dealt with in a really different way? Would we have this trail of tears following him? Former employees. There are no white women on this train because these accusations are false. Any man who has a history of having a drunken night out, and you know who you are, any of those women that you may have slept with or hit on at a bar can now say, that man raped me. And you will go to jail until it is proven otherwise. And those who live through what some would consider a relationship, detailing the good as well as the bad. You know, we're sitting on the couch and he's halfway asleep and everything like that. He started kissing me and stuff and guess the oral sex came in. I know Rob, our last conversation that I had with him in Chicago, you know, he inspired me and told me, Bear, just do what you want, do what makes you happy. He told me to continue to pursue my dreams, pursue whatever I want to pursue. And that's really all that I would be able to do. So don't blame me when the shooting don't stop, when kids are not obeying their parents, or when kids are listening to rap music or R&B music or sexual music that I, I put out or whatever. Blame the parents. It's, it's not about what the world thought it was about. It was about me getting relationships with my daughter. Don't paint no picture like I have not talked to you guys in over a year because I would call you guys four or five months at a time. So to believe something like that, so extreme, so bizarre, so outrageous, I just couldn't even fathom my parents, my parents believing something as bizarre as that. One of the things that's going to be said by this is precedent. And when you look at a man who's being charged like this, what does that give the ordinary man? who's not of stature and don't have the ability to draw resources to have four attorneys. And all of a sudden he's made with these allegations. How then does he fight it? How then does he prepare himself for this Me Too movement as we move forward? Precedence. So like I said, you know, are there real victims in the R. Kelly case? Absolutely. And I've said that from day one. 
The girls who were victimized by him in the 90s, those are the ones who get my sympathy. All these new folks from 2015 upwards, I don't feel bad for them because everybody knew R. Kelly's history, but because they thought that, you know, they would be different and R. Kelly would do something for their career, these parents threw all common sense out the window. We had the video the mother even stating that she bought her daughter the plane ticket, her underage daughter, she bought her a plane ticket to go see R. Kelly. Sure. It's hindsight 2020, now that you know what you do know now. As a mother, what would you go back and do differently? <laughs> I have one regret, and that was letting her go. My regret is buying those tickets and letting her go because I feel like that's my fault. I take full responsibility and full action because as a mother, I am supposed to protect my child. But you know what? Everybody make mistakes. So I have to deal with the consequences of my action, but nobody can judge me, only God. So I do know that, um, you know, with that being said, I would definitely not buy those tickets and not let her go. This makes no sense to me. But then you have people out here who want to come at me like I'm victim shaming. No, this is not called victim shaming. This is called having common sense and discernment and seeing through the bullshit. What these people are doing Okay, you want to talk about victim shaming? What they're doing is making it harder for the real victims of R. Kelly to get the justice that they need because this entire situation has now turned into a shit show and a fiasco. This is somebody who works for him. Like, you could really be setting yourself up. He thinks wilder to come and he know how to pop. I could really be setting yourself up. Be the project, bitch. I look red, bitch. Could really be setting yourself up. You know, so like I said, this father is not innocent. This is not some family reuniting. This is a family plotting to come up off of this situation. Now, last but not least, I wanted to address the two women in this documentary precedence, the one that I showed you guys a clip of. Both their last names are Kelly. I do not believe that they are R. Kelly's real sisters um, because R. Kelly's father's last name is not Kelly. I believe they might be just two, you know, attention whores that somehow got mixed into this documentary, which is not surprising, figuring all the other attention whores that got mixed into the Lifetime documentary. But this video is not about those two women. I could care less about them. This video was made to point out the two opportunists in the video, which is Angelo Cleary and his daughter, Azriel. So that's what my video is about, okay? I don't care about all the other stuff in there. I'm pointing out the fact that Angelo, who claimed he hasn't seen his daughter, talked to his daughter in three years, is in a documentary documentary that's supposed to be helping to show R. Kelly in a good light. So this entire situation is a hot damn mess, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Make sure you guys leave a comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that way you can be down with the notification squad. So let me know your thoughts on all this drama that's going on once again with the Pissy Pied Piper. All right, deuces. You won't believe what I'm going through Trying to hold this music down Just like you told me to Surviving chaos, girl I see that you survived Ain't taking sides Can't say who's wrong or right Cause all I know is I'm about to tell the story A lot of pain and a lot less glory